Good morning, everyone. Oh, you can sound better than that. Good morning, everyone. Yay! Good to see all of you here in the house of our Lord today. We've got a beautiful service on Father's Day in store for you. So we want to begin in worship. We have our alkalites going to light uh, the candles symbolizing the light of Christ, our wonderful worship team to lead us. Let's all rise together, if you will, as we celebrate the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to ask just the ladies to sit down and all guys to remain standing for a prayer blessing on Father's Day. All of you guys remain standing, if you will. Let's just have a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. What a great opening song for Father's Day. You are always with us. You are always with us. That is the emphasis of our sermon today, that your presence is with us no matter if the seas are choppy, no matter what's happening in our lives, you are with us. And our loved ones in you that are in heaven, you are with them always also. So, Father, guide us in this hour together as we worship Thee, and may all of God's children say, Amen. Let's welcome all the men here today. Woo! You may be seated. May be seated. I'm going to go ahead and do the children's story. If we have any little ones want to come up, got some Kit Kat candy bars. You guys, y'all come on up here. Kit Kat candy bars. Now, we got a special baptism afterwards, but I'm going to release all of y'all to go to Sunday school afterwards. But I know the family 
uh, are here for the baptism. So afterwards, any of the kids that want to go to the uh, uh, Sunday school are welcome to do that. Maybe, uh, Ian, if you can watch that after the baptism, some of the little ones might want to go next door afterwards also, okay? Good to see you guys. Let's put our hands up in the air and say, long, long, long time ago in a faraway place on the Wiflacoochee River. Reverend Bullywink Bullfrog, what's the bullfrog say? Ah, yes, indeed. Well, Bullywink was telling the story, one of his favorite stories about Father's Day. And you know that's what today is, right? Everybody's being good to their daddies or granddaddies or uncles. Yeah, may, ooh, this young lady said, maybe. <laughs> I love that. Well, I just hope that you will after you hear this story. Well, it was about Squirrely Boyly. He decided that he was old enough to leave home. He went to Pa Squirrely and he said, Pa, give me all of my money. It's time for me to go out and see the world. Pa Squirrely said, I don't think you're ready yet. He said, but I'm of age. And he said, all righty. So he ended up giving him the money, but they didn't have cash money like you and I have, right? You know what they had? Walnuts, chestnuts, and hickory nuts. That was their money. Loaded up his little red wagon, and so he carried it far away. And when he did, he ended up spending it all. I mean, all of the ones around him, they just took advantage of him until there was no money left. And then he came to his senses. He said, you know what? I'm hungry. I got to go somewhere to eat. And where do you think he went? Mr. Piggy Pete. And he went to the pig farm. Any of you ever been on a pig farm? I had a church years ago and a gentleman had a pig farm. And you know what? When you went out there, you went, it would stink, stink. Can you do that with me? Congregation, help us out again. My goodness gracious. And then he said, you know what? It just stinks out here. He said, I know that those that work for my pa, they do better than I do. I'm going to go tell my pa I'm sorry, and I'm praying to God, my heavenly father, to forgive me as well. So Squirrely Boyly went on his way home. Pa Squirrely was looking for him, saw him at a distance, and took off running. You've seen squirrels run, right? Fast as could be, grabbed hold of him, and before he could even get it out that he was sorry, he put a new fur coat on him and a chestnut ring on his finger. And he said, you were lost, but now you're found. And he said, daddy he said I've been he said I just I shouldn't have did this you know he said I've learned my lesson can I come home and you know what he said yes and that's the way our heavenly father is well when Bullywink told that story the kitty cats all sang together amazing grace how sweet the sound and they sang it in kitty cat language do y'all remember how to do that can y'all do that with me? Meow, 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 meow. It talks about God's amazing love. And then they gave everybody Kit Kat candy bars. Now I'm gonna tell you a secret. If you eat all these up and you're not sugared enough on Father's Day, I have my office store over there is open and there's a bag this big of Kit Kat candy bars. You just tell your Sunday school teacher that you need more, okay? Ethan, our baseball star, let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all you give to us, your blessings. And may all of God's critters say, Amen. Y'all can go to Sunday school, and I know some of the family want to stay here for a few minutes, and then y'all can, or maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Yeah, any other children? I'm sorry that want to go over to Sunday school. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Ian, Stacy. We've got some special presentations today, and some of you may know about it, and some of you may not. Uh, we are so excited. Another young gentleman in our congregation uh, has uh, reached his Eagle Scout uh, platform, and uh, you've heard about it, or if you've been with us, and uh, we're going to uh, give him a chance to come and share any of the others that want to share about that uh, and what it means, and then we're going to go into a baptism that I think that uh, will connect right with uh, this special presentation. Ben, you want to come at this time? <laughs> I thought you might want to say thank you to everybody. So, yes. Let's welcome our new Eagle Scout, Ben Rankin. I didn't ask Ben if he wanted to talk or not. So, Ben. I was told I wasn't. Good morning. Um, I wanted to thank every single one of y'all. 
for the opportunity to be here. Um, without um, people like my dad, Travis, good to see you, man. <laughs> uh, Ingrid Ellis, Kevin Ellis, all of my friends, family, all of you guys in the front, couldn't have done it without you. Cannot thank you guys enough. Thank you. Andy, do we have the pictures? You see what, this was his Eagle Scout project that's right here at the beginning of our prayer garden on the side there. There's the family out there and the scouts all working together. You see the angel there by the cross as well from Miss Joey Weisbaum. They put flowers out there. They're working on the prayer garden. And there's the prayer chapel. Oh, my goodness. That's part of the prayer garden that we have. There's Ben and Ty and Kev. Oh, look at the angle there, looking back at the church sanctuary. See Andrew. See Matthew. I don't know if I'm going to get all the names or not, all the guys out there. And Adam. Part of the Eagle Scout project, you have to be over. You have to manage different young men or uh, folks. And uh, besides raising the funds and even the little ones, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> ben, we can't tell you enough how much that means to all of us, all of us, you know. And I know the scouts, Brother Sam, the scoutmasters talked to me that they're you know, they're going to uh, do some renovation out there and uh, cleaning out some areas they want to look at. I know Don Worley is uh, in our church, a new member, uh, is looking at expanding some of the prayer garden into some other areas. You may have seen that out front. He's got some ideas. And it's just going to always be a special place uh, for our church. And to have that out there now in honor of Alex Kozlov. If you were not familiar with Alex, what a wonderful young man and when Ben shared about that uh, with the Court of Review for his Eagle Scout Award, had the privilege of sitting there listening to him share about what Alex meant to him and the reason he wanted to do this. And he has Alex's Bible verse on the cross as well, Philippians 4.13, you know, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So it's absolutely beautiful. Can we all say amen? Let's thank the Scouts again, especially Mr. Ben Rankin. Now, we're going to go into a time of baptism, and I want to mention that uh, we are going to baptize uh, a young lady, a little girl, which would be Alex's niece, and all the family is gathered here, and uh, she is going to be draped in uh, Alex's baptismal gown that we baptized many, many, many years ago, and it's been made uh, applicable for a young lady, but also the opportunity in the future if Michael and Maisie have 20 or 30 children and uh, <laughs> boys come along as well. So we are excited. So I'm going to ask if you will take your hymn books. Those are newly back in the um, um, area that we have there, your pews. And if you will turn with me to number 39. In the old days, we used to call this just a christening service because you would christen the new name of the baby. So it's a blend today. It is actually a type of baptism. Uh, but we in the Methodist Connection, we can renew baptismal vows. So when our little one is of age and would like to make a commitment to Christ herself, if she would like to experience the water again, we can sure do that. Can we all say amen? I want you to turn to number 39, and I'm going to ask the family that are going to stand with me if they'll go ahead and move forward, and the rest of the congregation to remain seated. If y'all will just come and stand right here in front of me, and you're welcome to film if you would like. Right up here. All righty. <laughs> Yeah, everybody wants to see. Well, we'll take the little baby around for everybody to see in just a minute. If you'll look at number 39, Liz, you come on up. Come get Grandma. Oh, can you see the baby over there? 
Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you have your hymn book, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. What is the name given this child? Harper Louise. Harper Louise. We now ask your family to take vows in your honor. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you that are gathered here, especially mom and dad, and if you'll answer with I do, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, repent of your sins? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, oppression, and whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you, before the company gathered here today, Confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. Put your whole trust in His grace. Promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture Harper Louise in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example that she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Congregation, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Yes. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and now include this whole family and especially Harper Louise Grayson before you in your care? Together, with God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. We have a rose on the uh, altar that represents the life of Christ. And through our baptism, we use the seashell that represents life. I'm going to ask if y'all can hold this for me at the present time. We pray over the water that is used that represents life itself in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Collection plate. Collection plate. Oops. What do you think? It's bath time. <laughs> All righty. You think she'll let me hold her? All righty. Hey, baby. Hey. Y'all got the pictures? Harper Louise Grayson, I baptize thee in the name of the Father and the Son. I baptize thee. In the name of the Holy Spirit. Hold this, please. May the blessings of Christ be upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Can I have her for a while? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this precious baby. Look at that. Isn't she gorgeous? Can everybody see her? All the family here? I think she looks like her pastor with a bald, <laughs> except she's got reddish hair. Scouts, can y'all see her? Ah, oh, isn't she precious? Oh, goodness, let me give her to Mama. You got her? <laughs> we have a little prayer shawl for a little uh, baby. <laughs> And so we ask that you take that, if you, I'll let you hold that. And this is the certificate of the baptism, if you will. Congregation, if you will move your hands this direction and let us pray over the family. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings, your kindness, your love to always take care of this dear family in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It's that good thing. Yes, the shell's yours. The shell's yours. Yours. Yes, indeed. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. Thank you, guys. 
Any of the little ones, did they all go on to Sunday school? I am sorry, that's just their heart. They saw that Kit Kat candy bar. I think that was it. <laughs> very much, very much. What a blessing. And you all know this dear family is so precious to us in so many ways. And they were all out there uh, yesterday, a number of them out on the ball field helping to lead. A number of you were out there as well. Uh, this new excursion, we've got to play in softball once a month, which was just a whole lot of fun. To have our scouts here today to see this, to be a part of this, Brother Ben's Eagle Scout Award, absolutely amazing. Can we all say amen again? Amen. Who's doing our announcements this morning? All right there. Ashley, if you'll come, if you'll take, uh, hopefully you picked up one of the bulletins that are out there. And if not, when you leave today, if you'll take one of those, it's got our weekly announcements. But there's quite a few things of vital importance that Miss Ashley has to share that are probably not on that. So if uh, you will give your attention to her at this time. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day again to all the fathers out there. Uh, any first time visitors here this morning who have not visited our church before? Oh, wonderful. Lots of, I'm sure, family of, of all special events going on. So good morning. We're, we're happy to have you. Um, I, I do know this week, and you guys have probably noticed as well, we've, we've um, taken down the separators between the pews. Um, we've also added the, the, um, the attendance um, logs at the end of the pew. So if you haven't done that yet, I know it's been quite a while, but you generally sign in your family and pass it all the way down to the end of the pew. If you haven't done that with us before, I feel like it's been quite some time since we've done that. So I want to get back into the regular practice of doing that. So if you wanted to, to work on that, that would be great. But yeah, I'm sure you've seen, um, as Pastor Eddie said, a lot of the materials are back in our pews as well, including the hymn books. Um, so we're slowly getting back to normal with all of that. So. Um, in terms of announcements, one thing I did want to raise up is our youth is leaving for camp tomorrow. Um, they're leaving the church here about 11 a.m., so um, I think we have a pretty good group of kids that are going. Um, so if you could just think of them this week, this is usually a very exciting and powerful week for them. Uh, I know we even have some of the youngest even that attend um, our, our Wednesday night class, some of the, I think, fourth graders that will be going. So we definitely want to lift them up and this will be their first experience with camp. So we want to make sure they have a great time. Um, we did want to extend a thank you to Second Life Thrift Store for the new air purifier in the Friendship Hall. If you haven't seen it, it's sort of up way far in the corner, um, back corner. And um, we're really hoping that, you know, with having that in there to purify the air, it'll really help uh, more to come on that, but it should really help to purify the air and make it safe for everyone to gather more in there together as um, we did have quite a few close gatherings in there prior to the pandemic. So hopefully that should really help with that. Um, Dr. Shaver's Bible studies on sanctification um, that many or have did order before they have come in um, and they can be picked up at the Welcome Center and there's also some extras so if you didn't get the order in and you did want one you can still purchase that um, they're two dollars to have that uh, Bible study collection so they're at the Welcome Center you can um, inquire on your way out. Tuesday at 12.30 in the Friendship Hall is a, a special meeting for uh, all of the past volunteers who used to work with the Forget-Me-Nots. So um, if you used to volunteer and would like to come back out again, or if you, you're not sure what it's all about and like to find out more, we do encourage um, any, anyone new who would like to volunteer as well to come out, and that's Tuesday, this Tuesday at 12.30. Um, we did have a worship committee meeting on Thursday and it was voted to extend the times of our services beginning in July. So this is very important for everyone who comes to all services. Um, so the eight o'clock service will be from eight to nine. And then our service that has been starting at nine since we've started back up will actually go back to its previous time of 9.30. So the service will be 9.30 to 10.30. So if you come early the first week, that's okay. I think we have donuts next door. So, but we'll, we'll be starting that new pattern starting on July 18th. Um, and I'm sure Pastor Eddie will do his uh, due diligence and remind everyone between now and then um, that the times um, will be changing. Did I miss anything? Okay. this morning if you'll go ahead and come the bibles are in the pews as you know and so if you'd like to follow that passage in the gospel of mark good morning, good morning. today's scripture reading comes from mark 4 35 through 41 
That day, when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, John. If y'all can take your flyer and turn over to the prayer concerns now, uh, we will go to the good Lord in prayer. Uh, Brother Bobby and Lori, if y'all go ahead and prepare. Um, yesterday we had the memorial service for Fred Brookshire, and we want to be in prayer for their family as they travel back. Many of them flew in for the service. Miss Debbie Wright led the uh, funeral service yesterday and did a beautiful job. She truly beautiful job. Uh, Jenny Flanagan um, used to come to our 8 o'clock service. Her cancer numbers are up, and uh, she was on our email prayer chain. And I thought it would be nice if all of us lift her up. She's so positive, but she's still pretty much homebound. So if you can keep Jenny, her husband is Ed uh, Flanagan, in your prayers. Uh, Kyle, that's on uh, our worship team today playing the guitar, mentioned about his grandmother, Jackie, has been with her sister, Linda, and she had surgery, and she's still in the hospital in Jacksonville. And uh, Linda was here uh, off and on when... Uh, uh, Jackie's dear husband was, was ill, as some of you may remember her, very active in her Methodist church there in Jacksonville. And so if we can keep all of them in our prayers, I know that they would appreciate that. Ashley mentioned about all our youth. I think there's 11 all together. And then uh, I think Coach and uh, Linda and uh, Chip and some others are all driving. Uh, Kristen and them are all going uh, together to, with the young people. Uh, so our prayers are with them this week. Thursday night, if it's the same as it has been in the past, Thursday night is when they focus on a relationship with Jesus Christ. And then Friday night, if some might be interested in the mission field. So if you can kind of put that on the back of your mind uh, in your weekly prayers, I know that that would be wonderful. And of course, all of our fathers, all of our fathers, and hopefully this will be a great day for all the fathers that are here. Can we all say amen? We're going to ask Bobby if you'll come at this time, dear friend and Lori, and thank you again for that opening song. That was just beautiful, Miss Lori, just beautiful. Bob, if you'll lead us to the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. There we go. I want to welcome all of you oh, once again in the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Yes, he is. <laughs> his goodness, his mercy, and his grace is in this place. Amen. Bob. We thank him for another day that we can just give back mm -hmm. a portion of and what he's given us. Mm -hmm. Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, when I woke up this morning, I looked to the hills. Mm -hmm. My father, I thanked him for allowing me to get up this morning. Yes. Started me on my way. Yes. Still in my right mind. Yes. What a day to honor him. Mm -hmm. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers here today. Yes. Yes. What an honor to be a father. I want to thank all of you that's tuning in online, worshiping with us in your respectable places. As we go to the Lord today in prayer, those names that Pastor Eddie lifted up, yes. Brookshire family. What a honor and was a pleasure for him being a member of our church for so many days, yes. so many years. Yes. yes going on to be with his father. Yes, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Mm. We're going to remember the Wright family mm -hmm. as their son went on. They left an impression on us. Yes, yes. 
and some guidance to all of us that one day, if we accept him as our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, we'll be right there. Yes. So we're going to go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. The altar is always open. Yes. If someone wants to fill in the gap for the Brookshire, yes. for the right, yes. it's open. Amen. So we're going to go to our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you once again you, for who you are. Father, we thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning still in our right mind, still in good health, still have our strength. Father, we thank you for guiding our footsteps yes. to come and worship Amen. with you today. Amen. Father, you allow us to set aside our differences, our bad thoughts, our opinions, and come together as a church as all of your children gathered here today, Father, to give back a portion of what you've given us. Father, we honor in Father's Day today. We honor in you. The song says, good, good, Father. Father, you've been more good to us than we've been to ourselves. But we say thank you today for life. We say thank you today for our health for your mercy, Father, for your grace. Father, remember those that are gone before us. Father, strengthen the families. Father, those that are in traveling. Father, give the Brookshire family traveling mercy, traveling mercy and grace. Father, that they arrive to their destination safe from all harm and danger. Father, we thank you for that service. Father, we thank you for Miss Debbie. Father, she performed a service that she has performed so many times. Father, we thank you for her today. Father, we thank you for that message that she shared with the Brookshire family. Father, let that message be food for those that were hungry, water for those that were thirsty. Father, we remember in the right family, Alex and others that are looking down on us today. Father, we know they're there. Father, they're watching over us. We thank you for them today. Father, remember their families. There's going to be days when they look for them, but only if they will look to the hills. We will see them again one day. When we get there, Father, we're going to sing and shout, victory, put on that robe, tell a story, oh, how we made it over. Father, going in the hospital this morning, Father, we got those that are lying there, searching for a miracle that only you can perform. Father, you haven't failed them yet. Father, they're calling and you've answered their call. Those that are needing comfort, Comfort them right now. Those that are needing of a healing, oh, Father, heal them right now. In Jesus' name, Jesus' name, we're praying today. Father, you hear our cry. You've wiped away the tears so many times. Father, those that are rehab sinners, trying to kick the habit, but Father, only if they would ask that you would take it away and replace an addiction with Christ. Those that are struggling in relationship, Father, if you would take away the abuse and give them some understanding that if we talk among each other, we can get somewhere. Father, help us today. Father, go in county jails, youth for offender camps. Oh, Father, strengthen them right now. Father, look on our church. Look on Williston. Father, help us to build a church under God, invisible, and a church for all. Father, let us build a church 
that is like a tree planted by the water. Father, that we shall not be removed. Father, we're going to honor you today. We're going to give you some glory today. And Father, as our praise team come, Father, help us to continue to come to you with all our needs and all our cares. Father, remember the little one that we just baptized today. Father, we're hoping that one day she will grow up and spread the word how God saved me, how he kept me. Father, remember their families. Father, we thank you for them today. Father, as we continue to lift you up, oh, Father, we're going to give you the glory, the honor. In Jesus' name, somebody say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. May all of God's people say, amen. Thank you, Bobby. Can we say amen again? I'm going to ask everyone to rise, if you will. As you know, as Bobby said, uh, the altar is always open. Um, but because we have our scouts here today, I would encourage some of you, um, and in the leaders as well, if you want to come just for a moment to stand or kneel. Uh, we are so blessed to have you in our congregation. And um, but, uh, in honor of even Alex today and what the project, those of that worked on the project with Ben, uh, some of our youth that are here, some of our young folks that are going to camp, if you'd like to come up and pray, or whatever the need may be, uh, you know, and if you hold your hand up, our team will come up and just anoint you with oil, and if not, they'll let you just pray uh, by yourself. This is just a beautiful time every week, and you're more than welcome to use the altar. Team, if y'all will lead us.
be upon us and let the church say amen. amen.
holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, creator of the heaven and the earth, and in this place today with us. Father, we honor you today. We're giving you the glory and the praise. And may all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Yeah. Beautiful worship. Thank you, Elizabeth, Frank, and Andy, and Kyle, and Lori, and Bobby. Beautiful worship. Our prayer team up here. You know, as they're singing, especially that last song, I was thinking of the different ones that over the years that have lost loved ones to go to the other side. And recently, Brother John, too, and his dear family, Elizabeth singing. I remember when she first moved here and uh, her husband uh, got very ill and with cancer, found Christ in this sanctuary. Amen. Elizabeth wrote about that in her devotional book. And for her to be able to sing and how the Lord has brought through the rain the, his presence and a a wonderful new husband that had suffered his spouse died with cancer. And then a new child, Daniel. And just how the Lord takes care of us through the rain. Just is always with us. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. For we pray for the devotion to share today. I, and then at the close of the service here after the sermon, we're, we're going to ask all the men uh, to come forward. We're going to have stations up here for a blessing. Just as we're singing the last song and we have men gathered up here that are going to just anoint you for a moment just and it won't be anything embarrassing. We're just going to ask all the men and all the boys if you will come forward and uh, just in lines and you'll see the stations and we just want to pray a blessing over you, a brief blessing and a card. Miss Irene has set that in store for us and, and then those family members and others that might want to gather, we're going to gather around the memorial tree and put up uh, Alex Kozlov's leaf. Before you leave today, if you get a chance, you ought to drive around the church and notice again that beautiful Eagle Scout project uh, and its completion and know that that's just going to be ongoing with the prayer garden and the different work that we do out there. And before we pray as well, and I don't know how many of you know this, but we said that on a Sunday, if somebody has a birthday on the Sunday, that we would sing happy birthday. And I don't know if there's somebody here today that maybe I'm not aware of, but Bonnie that's assisting us in the sound booth, today is her birthday. So let's welcome Bonnie. Woo -hoo -hoo! 29 and holding. Sing with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Bonnie. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your sweet spirit in this place. What a beautiful worship experience for all of us in Christ's name. Amen. Let me share just a few moments on the scripture that John read to us a little while ago. I titled the message, Why Are You So Afraid? That comes from Jesus' words. They've gotten on this boat the disciples, and they're moving around the Sea of Galilee, and they're traveling, you know, and it's a distance around the sea, and so they either walk or take the boat to the different settlements, and Jesus is just moving back and forth, preaching the good news and sharing the good news, and on this particular journey, as they're coming across on the boat, it's interesting that uh, he goes to sleep on a cushion, and a storm comes up, and they're scared to death, and it says the storm is so strong the rain so strong, if it was raining as well, that it fills the boat. And Jesus is sound asleep. Jesus is sound asleep uh, in the stern of the boat. Now, how in the world can that happen? And they wake Jesus up. If they hadn't awake, had, had waken him up, there would not be a miracle. Because then he calms the sea, you know. But when he looks at them, he raises this question, the title today, Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? You know, when I was a, a little boy, since it's Father's Day, I was trying to remember Father's experiences. And some of you may have had a wonderful earthly father. Maybe you would had a distant earthly father. Your father may be alive or, or gone on to the other side. And, uh, or maybe you don't have any relationship. Maybe there's nothing. You, your father was not there at all, your earthly father. And so I'd like to take just a few moments and talk about your heavenly father in these words today, okay? So I was thinking about my earthly father, and I, I have this little scene when I was probably four or five years old. We were in a gathering, and, um, and I was some other kids there, and moms and dads, 
And I would venture off a little bit from dad, and I remember that, and my security, I don't, I don't know how I remember this, but I do, was that I, I, my dad had on, I think it was blue trousers. And so being just a little tight, you know, as long as I could see those blue trousers and the adults mingling around, I was okay. I wouldn't get too far from that. And then something happened, stirred me, and I ran over there and grabbed hold of my dad. And to my great surprise, when I looked up, somebody else was wearing my dad's trousers. Amen. <laughs> I remember that, you know, there were actually a number of men had on blue pants, you know, I didn't realize that at the time. And so I was, I was thinking about that because just trying to think of Father's Day moments, you know, and uh, I thought, you know, the Bible tells us that we need to touch the hem of the Lord's garment, our heavenly father, you know, and I was trusting in the hem of my daddy's garment, right, for protection, security. But when I looked up, you know, it wasn't my dad. And I wonder how many of us, what a challenge today, if you use that analogy, uh, we're holding on to some kind of God. Is it the God of the Bible? It's time to look up and make sure who you're holding on to. Because the God of the Bible is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid? You know, we've just come through this crazy pandemic. I know that it's still around us. I understand that. And I know it's okay to take precautions. I think that's wonderful. I'm so glad to see a lot of our uh, taking the ropes down and the pews back with the pew pads and registration pads, the Bibles, and just a variety of things. But I know that we still need to, you know, wash our hands. They'll need to do stuff. If you get within six feet of a, of a University of Florida Gator, you need to really back away, right? Amen? You know, there's certain rules we just have learned. Uh, in the pandemic. There, there's no doubt. But, but the media, the propaganda has really taken advantage of, of us trying to be good to each other, taking care of each other, being respectful for one another's feelings. And th they have instilled fear and control. We know that, you know, um, upon us. And, and you can still, you know, feel that anxiety. And that anxiety was upon the disciples in the boat. They're with Jesus. And yet Jesus said, why are you so afraid? You know, the storm, shouldn't they have been afraid? I mean, the storm's raging, right? I mean, any decent person would be afraid. What if, what if the waves break over and somebody drowns? Does Jesus not care? Does our Heavenly Father care about the things that we care about? It's an interesting, interesting story. Fear is interesting. You know, I read a, a famous pastor years ago, and he said, the opposite of love is not hate. He said, the opposite of love is fear. And fear produces hate. Wow. 1 John 4, 18, good Bible verse to memorize. 1 John 4, 18, perfect love casteth out all fear. So when we draw close to our Heavenly Father, that perfect love can cast out all fear. You know, I want to enter into that, don't you? I mean, I want that peace that passes all understanding. I want that, that rest, that, that, that uh, Sabbath. That's what the word Sabbath actually means. I, I always kid when I, uh, folks, when they're joining the church, you know, and we meet on Sundays, as you know, and other at, days during the week, <clears throat> excuse me. And, um, you know, I say, well, you don't have to come to church every Sunday. And that just, whoa, really? You know, and to hear a pastor say that. Sabbath itself was not intended for us to gather together. It was to relax and to rest. Now, that's not a free ticket to go out on the river, you know, and spend the rest of the Sundays. But it's the idea that true Sabbath, true rest, is having the experience of Jesus. And that's what the 24-hour period of a Sunday or a Saturday for some faiths is. It's the idea of, of setting apart time to rest in the Lord. Hopefully, it will become 24-7, seven days a week, right? I want to enter into that. And so, an Old Testament passage came to me, 2 Kings chapter 6 in your Old Testament. And in 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha is the prophet, and the bad guys are coming. And so all of those around Elisha, they're scared to death, just like they were in the boat with Jesus. They're scared to death, just like we've been in the pandemic. Everybody's afraid, you know? And so, but Elijah's calm, just like Jesus was, just like we should be, you know? And he, he seemed to have a connection with the Father. And so he prayed, and it's a beautiful passage, and again, 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha said, Lord, open their eyes to see what I see. Do y'all remember that passage? And when the Lord opened the eyes of those that were around Elisha, they saw all these angels with these fiery chariots and these swords. He said, there's more with us than there is with them. Is angels all around us? Is that possible? 
Is it possible that the power of God's all around us? Maybe we can't see it. Do you remember when Jesus told Thomas in the resurrection story? He said, you believe because you see me. You see my, the nail prints and you see where the spear went in. He said, but blessed are those who do not physically see. Did you know if you've not physically seen the Lord, Jesus pronounced a blessing on you? A blessing on you. Because you have to just have faith. And that blesses the heavenlies. That blesses him. You believe in him for because the word says it, because the spirit says it. You don't have to see it with your physical eyes because Jesus is not in the physical realm. Jesus is in the spiritual realm. He's with the heavenly father. He is there connecting with the hem of his garment. He's there in the presence of almighty God. And we need to enter into that realm of rest that is there. We need to have our eyes opened. Now, the A of our ABCs, of course, is why are you so afraid? The B of our ABCs is they had to leave the crowd behind. They get in the boat, go to another place, and then they leave that crowd behind. You know, I think it's time that we leave certain things behind us, certain things behind us, you know? I mean, I want to be accepted just like you do and loved and cared for, right? I mean, we all do. We want that community. We want that in our jobs, our workplaces, our our church, our country. We want that. And many times we feel rejected and, and we will end up doing whatever it takes to get that back and sometimes doing things we shouldn't do and, and easing up on our convictions because we need that connection. And I wonder if we would need that connection so much if we were truly connected with the peace, the heavenly father, the heavenly father, you know, I wonder if we would, you know what, dear friends, I, um, I think of Daniel in the old Testament. He had to leave all of of his peers behind him to go and open the window as he did every day and pray towards Jerusalem because he was in exile, exiled away from his home. And every day he would pray. He had the windows open to, to that direction and he would pray for God's restoration. And the rule came to kind of get rid of him and they tricked the king to just to make a rule that nobody could pray to any God but to the king. And the king loved that with his, his selfishness and arrogance. You know, okay, that sounds good. And so when Daniel broke that rule because he's going to put God first, it said they, they brought charges against him and, and, and he's guilty. He didn't deny it. And so he was cast into the lion's den. You think he saw angels around those lions? I bet he saw the lions, you know. Did that take away from his convictions? No. No, he was willing to leave behind him the popularity, the the connection, the royalty, and submit just to God. Are you willing to do that here on Father's Day, to submit to the Heavenly Father? Did you know when I grew up, there was more sermons, and probably some of you that have some age on you remember these about hell. Do y'all remember those sermons, you know? Now, I don't want to give you a sermon completely on hell, but I want you to know as your pastor that hell is part of the motivation that I'm going to heaven. I don't want to go to hell. I believe in a hell. I believe the Bible teaches there is a hell. I do. I believe that well in my heart. And I can show you passages if you uh, want to meet with me about that, where the scriptures are very clear about that. It's, it's there, you know, and I don't want to go there. Did you know the words of your loving Savior Jesus, Matthew 10, 28 says, Matthew 10, 28, Jesus said something beautiful. He said, let me tell you who you need to fear in life. Don't fear what can destroy just the body. COVID-19 can destroy the body, right? Right? Don't fear that. That's a command of God. A command of God. Do not fear that. He said, let me tell you who you should spend your time fearing. Fear the one that can destroy the body and your soul in hell. Matthew 10, 28. That's our loving Savior, Jesus given us a warning, given us a warning. That's not a warm fuzzy. That's a hot fury. Amen. He's trying to give us wisdom and guidance and direction in the midst of the storms of life. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to my Jesus and be with the heavenly father. And then the best one of all to wrap it up this morning is the sea of our ABCs. Jesus calms the storm and it's completely calm. They wake him up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, he's asleep. How dare him be asleep on the job? How dare him be so peaceful? And he's not just asleep in the boat. He's on a cushion. He is comfy. 
They're going crazy. And Jesus is comfy. He's probably snoring in the stern of the boat. Did you know, I get up early in the morning to pray, probably like many of you do. And if I get my prayers done early and the house is still quiet, I'll stretch back my little chair to rest my eyes a few minutes because I get up so early to, you know, and I'll take a little snooze before everybody wakes up or I have to go into the hospitals or whatever it may be. But my neck can't, is not comfy there. It's not comfy. So I have a, a garnet and gold jacket that I go get. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I really do. <laughs> and I, I'm not making it up. And I, it's, just the, it's just perfect. I can get you one of those if you need one to rest your head there. And, and then I'll, I'll put it on the chair and I just, I, I get comfy and I can go to sleep. I catch myself snoring. I, I just, you know, when I kick back there, Jesus was comfy, comfy. Think about that now. And, but then I thought, you know, Lord, if they didn't wake him up, we wouldn't see the miracle. Don't we want miracles? Really? I mean, I want to see miracles, don't you? If, I mean, what would have happened if they didn't wake him up? Would, would Peter have drowned? I mean, John drowned? I mean, it was a terrible storm. Remember, it said the boat is filling up and Jesus is asleep. And so what does Jesus do when they finally wake him up? Remember, he stands up and he says, peace be still, and everything calms down. That's the miracle, right? He turned the sea into his pillow. I want you to think about that. He is calm. He is calm in the midst of the choppy waters. He's calm. Oh, for us to have that, to have that. Ah. So your challenge this week for Father's Day. Actually, today, I want you to really consider doing this, even if you think about it at the last minute before you put your head down on your comfy pillow tonight, okay? I want you to, to pray something specifically uh, in honor of Father's Day. We have learned this from our Wesley small groups that are meeting on Thursdays now, and uh, it came from the author of the little book we're using, and uh, Roxanne came up with this idea from the book, and it's the idea, I've never thought about it this way, when you're reading scripture, read with a theme. In other words, Lord, I'm struggling with my finances. What does this passage may say about finances? You know, I don't know if it says anything about it, but I'm going to be looking, Holy Spirit, that way. You read with a theme. So when I saw that, I thought, well, could we not pray with a theme? Now, it's Father's Day. And as I mentioned earlier, you may not have had a wonderful earthly father, or maybe you had a distant father, or maybe you don't have any memory of your father at all. But you can still do this. I want you to think of some kind of father image in your life. Maybe it was another person. Some kind of image and something that affected you. And then I want you to pray, and it's a very simple prayer, would my heavenly Father done that differently? I tried that this week and found out something very beautiful for me. You know, my dad, um, he loved peace and calm. And he used to tell me, and since our story is about uh, Jesus calm in the waters, this is the reason this one came back to me. When dad would go fishing, he said, son, he said, I liked it when it's just like a, a mirror, you know, like a sheet of glass, and I could see my reflection. I love it, and I, and I love that. And I remember when he told me that, I was thinking, yeah, it would be even better if you had a bucket of anybody have an idea what we could add with that, you know? Yeah, bacon, chicken wings. He said he just loved that. He just loved that. So with that experience, though, he said in that process, I love it, peace and calm. So then I prayed, Heavenly Father, what would you have done in that circumstance? And I felt the Heavenly Father saying, I would not have changed the choppy water to peace and calm. There's a reason for choppy water. Always there's a reason for everything. So why would you not change it, Heavenly Father? Because it's already peaceful. It's already peaceful. Friends, we're afraid of so many things. And our goal should be an intimacy with a heavenly father where we are not afraid at all. That a storm rages in the sea. And instead of us having to get up and save everybody, we're just in the Lord's hands and we can continue to be comfortable. Come what may. Oh, how in the world can we get there? How in the world can we get there? The Lord wants you to be intimate with him, to touch the hem of his garment, and he will give you peace.
Can you say amen? Let us bow. Heavenly Father, thank you for all that are gathered here. What a beautiful worship service setting we've had today. Just guide us now, and especially our fellas, as they come forward and able to stand a moment and just be anointed, a symbol of of the Holy Spirit being poured out upon them. And we give you praise and glory in Jesus' precious name. And may all of God's people say, Can we have our team to come up to do our closing song? And uh, we're going to, Lori, I had to skip that last for time's sake, the last uh, 377. (laughs) We've got some men that are going to anoint up here. And um, fellas, don't be afraid. They're just going to put the sign of the cross on your forehead or if you want it on your hand. That'll be fine as well. And if you want to stand or kneel at the altar a moment, you're more uh, than welcome to do that, okay? Let's all stand together. And then just as we begin singing, just guys, you see we've got the four stations. Uh, They'll have the cards and the oil, and you can come to the closest one to you and just stand there a minute and let them just pray over you a moment, and then it'll be precious. Amen? Amen. come forward that we could bring the blessing to you? Any of the men? Sometimes they're not able to come forward. I don't see any hands. All right. Brother Bobby. Father, we thank you. 
for this day. Father, you give us another chance to come and be with you and be in your presence, to give thanks for all that you've done for all of us for so many years, for so many times you've answered our call. Now, Father, as we come to the closing of this service, Father, we want to thank you in advance for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Father, help us to put on the whole armor of God. In Jesus' name we pray, and may all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and wave. We'll see you next Sunday morning.